Hi, welcome to this episode of The Latest Thread. And today we're going to talk about um, our most memorable client quilt. And most memorable can be anything. It can be what you did on the quilt. It can be the quilt itself. It can be the client. So um, this can go lots of different ways. And I'm curious to see everybody's most memorable. So Sharon's going to share the screen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Second, and here we go. All right, so this one, I just love that quilt. She did so much work. You know, it's like, a, a, you know, different blocks, but not only, she, she the, the customer, she's an artist. She loves to paint, but she's obviously also a quilter. And so um, all the blocks, the letters, the flowers, everything's hand embroidered, but then it's also painted. And if you zoom in maybe on something, you know, what she, when she painted that, the shading is just really incredible. Are you able to zoom in, Sharon? I can. Did you want me to go to a picture that's close up? Because I think you have a close up. Or is I? Well, I just wanted you to zoom in on the previous one, you know, sure. on something that's painted, and then you can see, you know, the a lot of the shading that she used when she did the painting, and that was one of the first quilts I did for someone else, you know, where I really had all this space. Of course, it was super special to her. It was a gift and. You know, she also, you know, enjoys gardening. So it was the whole thing, you know, that I thought was the most impressive. And then I had fun quilting it with just doing Phil. And then of course she had to enter it in a show and got a blue ribbon. So she was doubly excited. And then of course her daughter loved it. So she made a one also. But um, yeah, this one was super special to me. Did a and lot you can, of- You can see that shading down on those flowers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, talk about the variance in memorable. <laughs> Now this, this lady, uh, this customer, she is an artist. The initial quilt she brought me was a portrait quilt of her son. And she brought it and I wanted to cry. I really did. The layers, she had pieced fabric pieces, again, a portrait uh, quilt of his face layers of pieces and pieces and pieces of batting and batting. I think there was at some point 10 layers of something in that portrait quilt. And I quilted it, she liked it, but there was a lot of communication in regards to, you know, and she says she's not a quilt maker, clearly. So, you know, some communication in regards to maybe, you know, if you had just used one layer overall of batting, you know, to build your quilt, it would have been much better. So the next project she brought me was this, a kimono of, of sorts, you know, and I look at it and again, I see layers and I'm, I wasn't going to quilt it this time if there was 12 layers or more because it's a struggle, but just to load it, you know, and keep it straight, it definitely was a challenge. And of course it was super special to her, you know, and then she said she wanted to enter it in a show and I'm thinking, okay, um, lo and behold, in one of our local shows, Lake Farm Park, I see this kimono hanging it was all stretched out <laughs> it was very strange um yeah that was memorable for many reasons and this quilt um i just loved the colors i loved what was going on she called it uh, a cathedral window 
um, quilt. She took a class and, you know, I had seen some where the edges were hand stitched. She chose to do it on a machine and she did it very well. But I just thought that these blocks were super unique, you know, the colors were bright. It's almost like a, um, I don't know, something you think you might see in Mexico, you know, with all the bright, cheerful colors. And I enjoyed quilts like that because he can do something specific in each one of the blocks. So it's for some, some of us that have a short attention span, it's the perfect quilt because you don't get bored even though it's big. And I also thought the border was super cool. And, you know, I did um, the background fill all the same, marked the grid and stitched it. It took a while, but it was actually, it's once you mark your grid, it goes pretty fast. Yeah, and I love to combine, you know, the straight lines with the curved uh, pebbles or whatever other designs I picked, you know, to quilt the blocks. I think there's one more picture of that, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to uh, show the, the border. I thought the border was so unique. You know, you have the, um, pinkish fabrics that look like clamshells, you know, and then there's just so much going on. Uh -huh. I just loved working on the quilt. Very nice. Oh, this is me. Um, this is one of my most favorite ones. And um. I don't want to say I love when clients give me full reign, but I really do love when clients say, do whatever. Um, but I went a little over budget. <laughs> but I had so much fun marking the circles and thinking of different ways to create the texture within the circles. And then each of the stars is done uh, similar but differently. So I just had a lot of fun with this one. So that, I guess that's why it's my most memorable because of the fun that was associated. It wasn't, it wasn't agonizing or like boring. And I said, Ava said the same thing, the short attention span. Like sometimes on quilts halfway through, you're like, oh, this is the same block 48 more times, you know? Yeah. But that didn't happen on this one. Just had fun. I was lucky enough to see this one in person. I'm pretty sure that this client of yours is from Canada and I saw it at uh, Quilt Canada um, one of the last few years, since uh -huh. 2017 anyway, because that's yeah, when you said yeah, yeah I'm pretty pretty sure it had a ribbon or two hanging on it. So it was nice to see it in person. And this one, oh, this 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 client was so sweet. Um originally the quilt stopped at the edge of the nine patches. And she had sent me a picture and I said, Wow, I wish it would just go out a little further. You know, and we talked about it. So she added another border and then I drew it all out. And I I love it because there's so many levels of of texture and dimension in it. Like when you zoom in, it gets even deeper between the dimensions. But um, I couldn't share it for like nine months because she uh -huh. had it done and she wanted to put it in a show and she won four ribbons at that show. So yeah, yeah. I, I love this quilt. And it's like, it's neutral, but it's not neutral. You know what I mean? Like it, it looks like it's so neutral, but then when you get in some of the, the fabrics are a little brighter and prints. Yeah, I just, I love this quilt. Yeah, and it wouldn't have been that way if she wouldn't have added, added that border. Cause yeah. like it was able to add so much more. Yeah. You wouldn't have, you know, to do the uh, come out, you know, and extent like you did to create those, those lines around the dressed and plates had yeah. you not had that and to extend it. Yeah, that was really smart too. And it was it was only like maybe a five or six inch border, but it made such a difference in this quilt. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes listen to your long arm quilter if they say, hey, it really needs another border. <laughs> and this one, this is older. I think this is like from 2013 or 14. 
but this was all hand embroidery and it was it was beautiful but it was really boring it was just these embroidered blocks and sashing and more and then you know two borders and the next picture we found you can see it better i just i wanted it to pop so and after the fourth block that i made that a continuous path so that was really cool but um yeah, this was, I think this was one of my favorites because this is back when I first realized how much texture plays a, a part in making the quilt really pop and, and changing it up like that. But before you go to the next picture, so um, my most memorable, and I don't have a picture of it because this was way back in the beginning, but um, the phone rang and I answered it and there was a lady on the other end of the phone crying. She had just picked up her quilt and it was just a, bigger than a baby quilt but not like a throw you know maybe 50 by 50 I guess it is a throw I don't know but um she called me crying because she had just picked it up from the long armor and she said it was destroyed there were puckers everywhere um the long armor told her that it was her piecing and everything was, was awful and she asked if I could take a look at it so she came over and I looked at it and I'm like well I can't fix what's done so she went home and ripped it all out brought me a new backing, a new batting, and I quilted it. And when I called her to come pick it up, she started crying all over again because there was nothing wrong with her quilt. I don't know what happened with these puckers and folds, and but it was beautiful. But she told me that she actually thought about quitting quilting after that woman told her it was all her and this and that. So that, it, yeah, she was, so. <laughs> I fixed it for her and she was happy and she still quilts. So that was my most memorable one, but I don't have a picture. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of my most memorable client quilts um, made by a client of mine who lives in the Northwest Territories. She does a ton of quilt works quilts and usually has a couple of them here waiting to be quilted at any given time. She's very prolific. Um, and this one was mo probably very memorable to me because I am overwhelmed very easily by huge open spaces. And I think this was the most open space that I'd ever um, tried to quilt in one quilt. And it was a huge quilt. It was, I think it's almost a hundred inches. So that's a lot of space. So it was a really good lesson for me to um, go through that process of instead of telling people, just make the spaces smaller until you're not overwhelmed by them anymore. I had to take that lesson on my own mm -hmm. and continue to break those spaces down until they didn't scare me anymore. So I think that was like a really good kind of step for me moving forward into different quilts that had more open space because, you know, it's hard to plan on paper on these kinds of quilts because when you draw things, they're not totally to the same scale as you would quilt them. And then you actually get to the quilt and realize that some of those things that you drew don't work. So yeah, on um, paper, it's only a little, little tiny arc. You yeah. get to the quilt and it's like a 38 inch arc. <laughs> yeah, I don't even have space to quilt this, right? <laughs> Karen, yeah. can you zoom into maybe one of the corners? Because it's kind of hard yes. to see. Sure, you, you betcha. There we go. So we can really see, you know, what you were talking about. Yeah. Thinking, it, you know, maybe it helps to break it up and just look at the quadrant on something like that, you know, rather than the uh, the, the quilt as a whole, because then it also, I guess that's how you could divide it up. I right? never really for thought, sure. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think so. Like with the quilt works quilts, I do a lot of them, and um, luckily on their website they have just the bones of the quilt so just the lines oh, uh, and they show the piecing lines as well like some of the weird angles that you would have like there's a piecing line that goes along that angle which is really mm -hmm. unusual but it'll show that in the drawing so any of those lines you'll see so that when you print it out and you start doodling on it you can figure out what piecing lines or intersections you can use as part of reference points to or, apply yeah to aim lines. for mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're really, really helpful. But like you said, Ava, I, I'm, the quadrant is really good, but I include the center. So I print out the quadrant, but also including the center so I can kind of get an idea how the center ties into the, the corners. So, yeah. And of course, with that nice um, kind of tone on tone 
uh, background fabric, you can really see all the quilting. So that made me even more nervous because <laughs> little wobbles always show more on those kinds of fabrics, right? But it, uh, it was a real big confidence booster, but uh, making those spaces smaller was a really good lesson for me. So that's, uh, it was, I don't know if I said the name or not, that one's called the Diamond Wedding Star. And this one is maybe not as memorable for me as it was for the client because the, the, the crochet top that you see here was made by her mother and she had passed away and she wanted to preserve it somehow and use it, um, but didn't really know what to do with it other than keeping it in a chest. So we talked about, um, she wanted to actually make a full size bed quilt. So she chose this really pretty peach fabric and we pieced a very big plain top and back and just laid that crochet top over top of it. And as you can see, you know, crochet, crochet tops are a little bit stretchy. So it's a bit of a challenge to work with it it's, as it's kind of baste it down and quilted and the rest of it is hanging over your belly bar to keep it from the weight from pulling it down and stretching so it was a real challenge to manage that and i think that some of those little wobbles kind of add to the charm of it because it is was handmade um but we used uh the spoon foot to just travel right over top so we quilted an edge to edge pattern and went right from one side to the other right over top and I did base the edges down so that they wouldn't flip up mm -hmm. but I was just amazed and thrilled at how it traveled over all the rest of the crochet like even these bigger gaps and areas where some of these pieces were kind of flipping up and you know how crochet pieces when they're older they they do they kind of get wobbly and mm -hmm. they distort and pieces are sticking up it just sailed right over them with no problem so um so I, I, yeah again and not maybe as memorable for me personally but i know it was something that was really really special to the clients so that's... what a great way to preserve that i have never seen anything like that a crochet you know i know it and she can admire you know Mm -hmm. and it's usable you know she, we also made her a couple of pillow shams to to go with it and they didn't have any crochet on them but they had the same fabric and the same pattern printed on it printed <laughs> we were just talking about a printer on our break um quilted on it and uh but yeah what a wonderful now it's something that she can actually use oh. and appreciate and, right. and love so and the last one, this is a Lucy Boston quilt, um, memorable for both me and the client for sure. It's kind of a special story with that one. Um, really unusual blocks. Uh, they're all hand pieced, uh, kind of unusual shapes and trying to figure out what to quilt in there that would not take away from the piecing, not overpower, just be a nice compliment, but still show off the quilting as well. And I consulted with Karen because she had a pattern for a completely different, didn't you? I don't think you even designed that pattern with a Lucy Boston in mind. No, it was actually originally from a wedding store. <laughs> right, right. And what I love about Creative Studio with when, the, when you take a pattern off of the pattern store and you pull it onto the CAD screen, you can divide it and take it apart and rotate and take pieces and put them back together. And I, I literally di dissected one of Karen's patterns and put it all back together um, to make this design that went right so perfectly. So mm -hmm. it ended up being that this was a blade right here. Yep. And I, I don't even remember what the original block looked like. That's uh, two different elements from it was actually two separate elements from the the that's melon right. mm -hmm. the melon that's right there's a shorter one here yeah yeah and then we designed your own border to match it <laughs> yes yeah um so yeah and, and i just loved the the way that it finished it nicely we did a a triple um continuous curve on all of these shapes and um some nice slim feathers to go around the outside edge and 
the reason this one was so special was because the lady who made it, um, she was diagnosed with a terminal illness and she's with us to this day. So she, she pushed and pushed and pushed to get this quilt finished because she wanted to have it finished um, before she went. And she has a clean bill of health now. Um, and now it's gonna make me teary. Uh -huh. And this is her standing with a ribbon with her quilt. Awesome. Um, it's one viewer's choice a couple of times and she's just so proud. And so it was, it w I didn't know about this part of her journey when we were doing it. And then she told us af after she picked up the quilt and it was just like, wow, this, this is now this is special for both of us. And yeah. yeah. So, but I mean, it was also fun, like experimenting with the creative studio and manipulating the patterns and learning more about how to do that kind of stuff and creating something really unique for one of these quilts. So so that's a Lucy Boston and. Okay, we're gonna take a little break now. And when we come back, we're gonna check out Allison's quilt and we got some ideas for her. So we'll see you in a minute. Welcome back. It's time for our ideas for your quilt segment. And we have Allison with us. And Allison, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, I'm um, just Allison and I'm from a small town in Lisbon, Ohio. Um, I have been quilting for a while, always been around sewing with my mother and my grandmother. Um, we, uh, after my kids graduated high school, we decided to buy a machine. A friend had been mentoring me with her Statler. And when it came down to it, I was not able to afford a Statler. So I have a Gamma Classic Plus for about a year. And I do a lot of the pantographs I've been practicing in the um, freehand. Mm -hmm. I have a Gamma Classic Plus too. <laughs> <laughs> I love I it. I, I, I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Allison, okay. I probably live about 20 minutes from you. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. In Pennsylvania, but like Lisbon's not very far from me. Oh, wow. I'm in Ohio too, Allison. So yay. Yay, Ohio, right? Yeah. <laughs> the other two of us are really far from you in different oh, directions. <laughs> <laughs> and far from each other too. <laughs> oh. Oh. So um, Sharon's going to share your quilt, just the picture you submitted. So if you want to talk about it a little, that would be great. Okay. All right, this is a, a quilt that I found at a yard sale, believe it or not. And funny thing is, I found it over in Eon Valley at a yard sale. That's where I live. Yes. <laughs> did, you, did you get rid of that quilt? <laughs> did you sell this quilt, Jody? I did not. <laughs> I had known that from previous episodes that that's where you were from. And I just thought that I got a real kick out of it that that was there. So. Anyway, the quilt was at the yard sale. It has a tag on it, just a sticker tag with a label that says um, who made it, who it was made for. It was made in about 1940s. Um, it's a hand-pieced star applique onto a bed sheet. So um, it's not what I usually quilt. I usually quilt, um, I like a lot of quilts that, are you, that people use, um, the baby size, um, 
throws twins and um I tell them if they if they wear them out I promise I'll make them a new one so please use the quilts so, but this is not what I'm used to to quilting and I was just wondering if you guys could give me some ideas oh I'm sure we could do that <laughs> <laughs> okay are we ready yeah we're, we never know what order we're going in so it's like a surprise <laughs> So I did this one and uh, yeah, because it is hand pieced, you know, so it was kind of tricky to think of something that would allow for the, maybe the fluffy parts towards the center not to be so noticeable right. uh, once it's quilted. So I approached it, I went out of the points of the inner, you know, diamonds and created, well, it's obviously not a hexagon, it's probably more like an octagon, you know, just connecting with lines from those outer uh, diamond points. And then I like feathers, it's a traditional thing. Right. So I just subdivided that piece again, going off, you know, of some of the, you know, the points then to put the feather plumes into those segments. And then again, you know, it's kind of hard to know the scale exactly. Um, and then I echoed that octagon shape. Um, well, first I did an echo, yeah, around the octagon shape. And depending on how big the quilt actually is, you can do a couple echoes, but I wanted to put the pearls in the center for it to really frame in that center piece. Mm -hmm. And then um, just did the chevron type quilting um, in the outer star points. Again, an echo with the pearls and then a feather meander in the open spaces that can eat up some of that, you know, if the bed sheet's not quite, um, you know, even square. So that eats up a lot of that. Right. Oh, great. Okay. Would you use the, the color thread to match the, the, the bed sheet, which is like a pale yellow? Oh yeah, definitely. But you know, we use contrasting um, pen when we do the drawing, so you can better see it. But most definitely, yeah. Okay, great. I would have never thought to do the the almost a wheel spoke, you know, out, coming out of the center like that. That's well, great. that way I thought it connects, you know, so you have a starting point for, you know, where to separate the areas. I mean, you can approach that a lot of different ways. Um, I was playing around with instead of the feather plume and each one, you know, right. to do maybe something in the alternate ones. I mean, you have a ton of options. The goal is, you know, to make it as, um, flat as possible with the quilting and still adding, you know, something pretty to it. And to me, you know, the feathers go with that traditional type thing. You had asked for, you know, modern and traditional options because you certainly can make that modern also. So hopefully somebody else did approach it that way. But, you know, with all the open space, you have tons of options based on, you know, your skill level and how much time you want to put into the quilting. Yeah, that open space kind of made me nervous. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it makes us all nervous. Yeah. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> I think that's totally natural to yeah. be overwhelmed by those big spaces. It's like a, a big giant piece of paper. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. So this is mine. Um, you know, initially what I, I started and drew something super modern, um, but I know from quilting quite a few antique quilts that, because I like to do a lot of lines and things, and usually I would connect like points in the piecing, but all of the antique tops that I've done 
those points <laughs> and the piecing intersections aren't always very good. Right. So if you start to use them to make lines and, and connections, then it, it'll look off because, you know, the points aren't always right. And the other thing I thought about too, was that, you know, with these type of quilts, that center section mm -hmm. is usually a little, um, puffy. Yes. So that's another problem with, if you're going to do lines and things like that, because with lines, there's really nowhere to put any extra. So I changed my mind altogether and decided to do just a gigantic flower. And I did the same. And what I actually did was I drew those dividing lines like Ava had, okay. but I just used them as a place to know where these petals were going to go. And knowing that it's giant, you have to put something into every petal because, you know, you couldn't have like a one foot by two foot petal with nothing in there. Um, and I made sure that I would put the, the center of the flower, like in the center of the quilt so that you can reach all of the top ones. Mm -hmm. And then when you advance the quilt, still be able to reach all of the bottom petals at the same right. time. Right. Even though you have a huge throat space. So that really <laughs> wouldn't matter to you. Um, yeah, that way, you know, I, I just think it's kind of able to eat up any extra fabric. Okay. That was, yes. One of my concerns. Um, without worrying too much about it. And then I just kind of randomly came out from between each petal with a, and I wouldn't use a template or anything to mark the spine for those. I would just randomly draw them in there. I think it makes it a lot more flowing when you do it that way. Right. And then I just echoed and I, I don't know the scale. I would probably do like half an inch echo around the outside just to kind of separate it. So it doesn't all run together. Okay. And then I would just mark these random circles in the, in all of that white space and add some little fl uh, flowers in there Right. to kind of bring the center, you know, make it kind of all work together and then just fill it with like flowing leafy things. Cause again, it's a great way to eat up extra space. Cause you know, if you would see you have like a, a ripple in the fabric, then you can just kind of, I make sure that's inside a leaf. Okay. If that makes sense. Cause then it, you know, it'll all be in one place. Right. Right. Wow. Great idea. Thanks. It'd be pretty quick too. <laughs> <laughs> you see the left hander, she draws to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so I went more of a, a mandala shape, but I started just with, um, I don't even know what that shape is, like big pointy ovalies in the center and filled them with feathers. And then just divided all the space into different little shapes building mm -hmm. outward. So you'd kind of have to have a little bit of a plan before you started quilting to, sure. to know which shapes go where. But I just, I, I was thinking the same thing. You got to suck up that center fabric first. Okay. To get it kind of flat. Cause they all do this in the center. Every one of them. Right. There's but, just some um, things coming together. Yeah. So I just, I did random, um, just feathers and dense fills and a little bit of cross hatching in that center point for cross hatching. But, and my scribbles are just dense fills. It's whatever fill you want, you, you would want to do. And then out in the border, I just, I broke it up with um, like columns, echoed columns of, of no quilting and then a dense fill. So you had that texture in the background. Wow, okay. be very pretty yeah I want to quilt it <laughs> <laughs> I like this area in here I just that mandala idea is not intuitive to me and I just like the way your brain works with well, mm -hmm. that space along that line it's so unusual and unexpected. and then echo it out into the border too so it 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 pulls that eye I like to go over and under things so it almost looks like it's going under the echo of the star mm-hmm yeah, I like that. I get ideas too. <laughs> yeah, we all do. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Awesome. 
Okay. Well, I had the, um, I, I guess I was lucky. I got to see everybody else's drawings before I did mine. <laughs> and I, um, and I, some of them are a little bit more traditional or a little bit of a mix of both. And so I thought, well, this is out of my comfort zone to do something modern. So I challenged myself as well to draw something that was more modern instead of the more traditional, like I usually do. So um, I'm going to echo a couple of the points that everybody else has said, you know, with the fullness. Um, one of the things that I thought about in this quilt was that for the most part, the palette, the color palette is really neutral. It's really just really soft and subdued. And in some areas you can't even see the piecing because it's so nude. Um, and so the outer, the orange and that red tip on the point draws your eye outward because that seems to be more the dominant area. So killing two birds with one stone, um, something very open, uh, not so dense in the center will help to balance out the eye being drawn outside because if you feel too tightly in the center then that's going to recede back a little bit so um, that's going to serve two purposes one to eat up some of that fullness in the center and the other would be to just kind of balance the um, scale of the whole whole thing where your eyes go um, and I when I drew this I drew a continuous spiral but if you don't feel comfortable doing that hand guided or if you're not comfortable with how it's going to like how even it's going to be you could um, go with some of those points and use an arc ruler and then just do in, uh, circles mm -hmm. going in and you could connect them so you wouldn't have to stop and start. You could just travel in and then do another circle, travel in and do another circle. And those circles will eat up lots of fullness because you can just kind of move the fabric and like poof it into those little areas where it's not stitched. Um, I did put a lot of lines in and I did consider the whole hand pieced um, and um, hand applique or applique down to that sheet. When I was thinking about these lines and thinking, are the points really going to line up at all? Um, but the neutral palette, I think, will be a little bit forgiving if you were to choose to do some lines. And I wouldn't try to connect every point. Like if you were traveling from here to here, I wouldn't try to connect every tip. I'd probably connect the outside edge ones and then let the inside ones, just the lines fall where they do. Because overall, when you stand back and look at it, you're going to see that quilting on top as a whole different design element than the quilt um, because that palette is so neutral in the background. So um, really a fun chance to, to show off some, some neat stuff. Um, and went geometric in the border. Again, I would probably put feathers or something like that if I was going for a more traditional look. Um, <clears throat> but I chose to do something a little bit more um, angular with the spaces, kind of like Karen's, um, just a different fill inside, just straight lines instead of um, something curvy. And then with this, this, this design, I definitely have spaces that are wider uh, quilting than like say if you wanted to put ribbon candy or wishbone or something else in here, it doesn't have to be pebbles, um, but have some different uh, widths of spaces and then some that are left open so that you have some relief just in case you are struggling with some of the fullness. Um, and then the easiest thing is to pick one or two elements and then just repeat them. So I did the same thing and put that, this kind of wave design in, um, in the center ring as well. So whenever I run out of ideas, I just look to what I've already done. It's like, okay, can I use that again somewhere else or can I tweak it somehow? Um, Ever. Yeah. So, and, and th this way too, because <clears throat> applique down, I mean, I've done some quilts that have like the whole thing's been applique down onto a background and the ditch is kind of ambiguous. It's kind of like, um, where is the actual ditch? And sometimes the stability of a hand piece, hand applique to a background, the stability isn't always there. Um, so by just completely stitching across those things and right on top of them might, it, depending if you're gonna use it as a bed quilt, might give it some extra strength um, mm -hmm. when you try to ditch things too much and maybe some of those hand applique stitches aren't so sturdy, no mm -hmm. idea. Um, that can just help to tack everything down and keep it in place. So I definitely wouldn't use black thread, <laughs> 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 uh, um, <laughs> but something in this kind of lemony area, like that buttercream lemony area would probably look great overall. Um, yeah. 
what about a backing? Um, I was even thinking maybe even doing something like K facet backing, like, you know, something very bright. And- oh, like one of those cabbage roses. Yes, yes. Huge. Yeah. That would That's look really cool on the back. Backing. Another thing I had considered was cutting it down and making it a square instead of a, the, the rectangle shape that it is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, making it like the 81 by 81. Mm-hmm. That was something I had considered too. I think that's a good idea. It's going to be really I like cool. them as squares. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I, I like them as squares. It, it oh, messes yeah. with my brain when it's longer on the one. I, end. I agree. Yeah. yeah. If you were ha- going to leave it longer like that, it might be like, okay, well, this is an area that goes up on top of the pillows or something. If it was on the bed, right. like have a pillow tuck section, but it doesn't feel like a comforter quilt to me. But. Right. <laughs> I just thought the, the fun uh, backing would be great. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> that idea. You gotta remember that it's a bed sheet. So I might at least double bat it so that whatever's on the back doesn't show through to the front. Okay. Yeah, and that's gonna help with some of that weird fullness in spaces uh-huh. too, having that extra batting in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, awesome. I hope you got some ideas from that. <laughs> Good. I can't wait to go try it now. <laughs> and definitely, um, it, when you do quilt it, I, mean, I, I almost said if, but no, you will. When you do quilt it, <laughs> definitely share some pictures with us, you know, tag in the Facebook group because we okay. want to see it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sounds great. Well, thanks, lady. Thank you for joining Thank us this you. morning. Yeah. Thanks, Allison. And I'm going to email you all of the designs so you'll have them in your inbox today. All right. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. 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 Well, thanks for joining us. And I hope you enjoyed that little segment on our most memorable client quilts and also all the ideas for Allison's quilt. And we'll see you again next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.